Hi, my name is Dr. Justin Ernett. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Salt Lake City, Utah at the University of Utah Health. And today we're going to be discussing a superficial MCL reconstruction using semitendinosus allograft. My indications for superficial MCL reconstruction include a patient with multiligamentous knee instability where the medial soft tissue stabilizers are disrupted, or in chronic valgus laxity uh, from a previous MCL injury requiring ligamentous reconstruction. So we've chosen a semitendinosus allograft that measures 240 millimeters in length, and we have our MyTech speed trap to prep the ends of the graft. I like the speed trap because it's quick and efficient and provides a good locking stitch on the graft. So we're just going to pinch the graft and pull tension on these stitches while someone is holding counter tension on the other side of the graft. So we're just going to prep the other side. I like the semitendinosus because I can loop it over in a doubled fashion and it allows for a variety of utilizations with regards to my fixation techniques. Now if both ends of the graft prepared, we're going to take a free number two stitch and center it on the graft and fold the graft over the top. And we'll now just size our graft and confirm our dimensions. And it looks like it's going to be about a seven millimeter graft. So we've marked out our medial structures of the knee, starting with the femoral aspect, the lighthouse of the knee being the adductor tubercle, where the adductor tendons come in and attach. And directly distal and anterior to this is going to be our medial epicondyle. And the place where we're going to find our superficial MCL origin is just posterior and proximal to this. I've also marked out my joint line. And we know that the superficial MCL inserts about six centimeters distal to the joint line on the tibia. And I've marked that out here. It'll be just below our pes tendons, which can be palpated usually below the skin. And the actual insertion, it's important to note, is just posterior to this along the posterior medial border of the tibia. So we've gone ahead and made our dissection, starting on the femoral side. We made approximately one inch incision centered directly over our superficial landmark and elevated off skin flaps anteriorly and posteriorly. And we can directly palpate our adductor tubercle as well as our medial epicondyle here. And uh, we'll find our superficial MCL origin right, as we said, proximal and posterior to that medial epicondyle. I can also confirm location by applying a slight valgus load and feeling the injured MCL tension under valgus, which can help us identify our femoral sided origin. Moving distally, we made an incision centered about six centimeters distal to the joint line. Again, about a one to one and a half inch incision. I've already taken the liberty to elevate off the pes tendons, as you can see here, and I've tagged them. And we'll find our superficial MCL insertion site just directly deep to those on the posterior medial border of the tibia here, and I've marked it. And when we drill these tunnels, we're going to want to aim our pin from this posterior location in a slight anterior and proximal direction so that we're staying within femoral bone as well as avoiding any other tunnels that we might be drilling for concomitant HCL reconstructions or other procedures. And so I've already centered my position here, and we're going to just drill our pin in that trajectory. And we're going to drill this all the way out the other side of the femur through the skin. Now before drilling the tunnel, I like to also get my pin into the tibial side. And again, I'm making note that my leg is slightly externally rotated. But I also need to make note that the fibula is posterior lateral. And so while I'm on this posterior medial border of the tibia, right in the center of the MCL insertion, I really want to drop my hand so that I'm going perpendicular to the tibia in the anterior to posterior plane. So I'm just going to get it started and then I'm going to make sure I drop my hand. And we're going to go bicortical all the way out the skin with this as well. Okay. So at this point I just like to check that I have the appropriate anatomic position of my pins. We want our MCL graft to be isometric. And so I've taken a number two suture and I've looped it around my femoral pin, brought it 
under the skin down to my insertion site and looped it around its pin as well. And I'm just going to arrange the knee to make sure that my suture is isometric through a range of motion. And it looks like that this is appropriate. We can accept up to about a millimeter of uh, anisometry, but preferably we want a full isometric graft and these pin sites are going to work good. So now we're prepared to drill our tunnels. We'll start on the femoral side. And we're going to drill this tunnel relatively deep because uh, we'll want some wiggle room with our graft length. So I'm going to drill to about 40 millimeters, knowing that my graft probably won't dunk all the way into the end of that tunnel. All right, And then we'll go right into drilling our tibial tunnel. And on this tunnel, we're going to drill to about 20 to 30 millimeters, but definitely not through the far cortex. We're just going to stay unicortical. Next, we can take some passing stitches and use our pin eyelets to thread these stitches into the tunnel, weaving the looped ends out towards us. Okay. And now we'll be ready to pass our graft. So we now have our graft, which was previously prepped. We're going to first dock it into our tibial tunnel using our passing suture. So we've bottomed out the graft here. I like to put a snap on the back side of the skin just to hold that tension in the tunnel. And then as you can see, I've already used a hemostat to make a pass under uh, layer one of the medial aspect of the knee. And I'm going to use that to shuttle my graft towards my femoral tunnel. like so. And then lastly, we can dock the femoral side through this tag stitch. And I'm not going to pull this all the way in yet because I'm going to wait until I get my fixation in the tibial side first. Okay, we're now ready to fixate our tibial tunnel. And so while I have tension pulling on the sutures on the lateral aspect of the leg, I'm going to insert my nitinol wire into the tunnel. And I'm going to insert, insert a 7 by 23 millimeter Milagro advanced interference screw. And I'm using a biocomposite interference screw, but peak is always a, also an option. I'm also going to pull just slight tension on my femoral side just so that the graft maintains at the appropriate tension. Okay. And so we've now fixated our tibial side. Now that we have the tibial side fixated, we can go ahead and dunk our femoral end of the graft into the femoral tunnel here. <clears throat> and when we tension and insert this fixation, we're going to want to hold the knee at approximately 30 degrees of flexion with a varus force applied. And while holding tension on the graft, I'm going to insert my nitinol wire into the femoral tunnel. Here. And again, I'm going to use this time an 8 by 23 millimeter Milagro advanced interference screw, again biocomposite. So we're holding tension on our graft. We have our knee at approximately 30 degrees of flexion with a slight varus force, and we're going to fixate our femoral tunnel. Okay. And we can now see that our graft is fixated on the femoral aspect as well as the tibial aspect with good tension. Lastly, uh, as part of an optional portion of this procedure, the superficial MCL does maintain some proximal attachments about one and a half centimeters distal to the joint line. And we can recreate those attachments by using a MyTech 1.5 millimeter all suture VersaLoop anchor. And so I've got the drill guide and drill and I'm going to find my location one and a half centimeters distal to the joint line just posterior to my graft and drill my tunnel. We'll go ahead and insert our anchor. And we'll deploy our anchor. So I'm going to pass two locking stitches through the posterior aspect of my graft. Again, we're one and a half centimeters 
distal to the joint line. And I now have my graft locked with one limb. And I can use the sliding action of the other limb to anchor that down in place while I secure my graft. And you can see we've now recreated that proximal attachment of our superficial MCL. Postoperatively, I place my patients into a range of motion knee brace. They're allowed to touch down weight bearing for two weeks postoperative with the knee locked in extension. But while non-weight bearing, they're allowed to range their knee from zero to 90 degrees. After four weeks, this range of motion is progressed. Additionally, after two weeks, they're allowed to progress to weight bearing as tolerated with the knee locked in full extension.